Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. I want to start creating these small exercises so you can start getting more familiar with your guitar plugins and how to program MIDI and also how to read notes in tablature. Now, I don't know if I'm breaking any rules by doing this. This is purely for educational purposes, but I'm using Guitar Pro 8 for my tabs. And I subscribe to my songbook, which is an additional service that they provide, and I'll provide a link in the description. But it has lots of great tabs that you can use to practice guitar programming, and so you can hear how a virtual guitar is supposed to and can sound. All right, so this is the first Four Measures of Austin by Blake Shelton. It's a very beautiful intro. Now I've opened up an instance of Ample Guitar T. And this is the finger library, because that's the sound and technique that we're going to use. Now make sure that your D string is tuned down all the way down to D, rather than E, because this is what the book calls for. This is in 4-4, and it's set to 120 beats per minute. Great, now that that's out of the way, let's go to Riffer, create a new riff. Make sure it's set to 4-4 and 1 16th for riff quantize because the smallest note value in this is an eighth note later on we see 16th notes but we're not going to do that in, in this exercise the thing about programming from a tablature is being able to translate notes in real time we have eighth notes in our sheet music how does that translate here these are our quarter note beats here so these spaces are quarter notes then we have eighth notes and then we have 16th notes. So if I click option and then just create a note, it's going to be a 16th note long. So later on, we're going to want this to be this long, or at least this far spaced apart. So our first note is C, and that's going to be on string five, fret three. So we drag that up, and then string three, fret zero. Next one is string two, fret three, then string one, fret zero. Because I've tuned it down, it sets it to D instead of E. And this produces a really beautiful effect in the music, by the way. Now next beat is string three, it's already set to zero. And then the next one is going to be on the same string, string four, that's fret four, two, and zero. And zero. Good. Now we can select all of the notes, and this says let ring throughout, so all of them are going to just populate the whole measure. Now we're going to take this note on fret four and slide it down to E. It produces this really nice effect. Now we're going to set this to four measures long. I forgot to do that. And then on the next measure, we start on string six. That goes to fret three. Then we go to string four, fret zero. String three, fret zero. String two, fret three. That's already on the right place. And then this note lasts quarter note long. We don't have to do that. I just want to show you where the next note is going to come in. It's going to come in after that because it takes up half a beat. So starting right here, string three, fret zero. All right, so we can select these and then press legato and it's going to fill up that measure as well. Now on measure three, we have the exact same thing that's played here. So there's two things we can do. We can right click and press copy. Or we can select them all, hold down option, so it gives that little plus sign, click, and then drag here. This is a little more risky, but I like doing it that way. And then lastly, we have four notes or five notes being played. So G, that's string six, fret three, already on there. Then string four, fret zero. String three, fret two. String two, fret one. 
and then string 2, fret 0. Now this note right here is going to be hammered on because of that little slur mark. Anytime you see a slur in tablature, it's going to be a hammer on. But if you see a little line like in measure 1 and measure 3, that means it's going to be a legato slide. So I'm going to select these notes, hit legato, and it should sound fine like this. That should be hammer on, sorry. There you go. Now there's a gap in between these. Usually what I do is if the chord change requires you to change your hand position so your hand physically moves across the neck on a real guitar, if it would do that, there's going to be a gap in between these. And it's going to be filled in with this sound right here. However, since you're only lifting up your fingers and shifting them to other strings, you don't need this. That means that we have to select these notes and press legato again so that it fills this space here. When we select these, the goal is to fill up all the space so that these strings continue to vibrate since it says let ring throughout. Sometimes it will stop at the measure line and you just have to do it again. In this case, it's not doing it. All right, let's listen to that. It's a very beautiful intro. Now you can use this as the basis of your own compositions. That's one of the purposes of this video. So that you can see what the guitar actually does. And so you can see how you program it in Apple Guitar. Now I'll drag this to your DAW. And it will play back. By the way, I'm using ROM for my reverb. I have it set to 20%. This is just a very beautiful reverb. The K is 1.9. And this sounds good when you capo it up, too. So if you want this, head on over to hi-fi-midi.com, click on MIDI Packs, and go to the free MIDI file section, and it will be listed under Austin. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with my latest videos. Head on over to hifamidi.com for MIDI programming courses, MIDI packs, and free stuff. Thanks for watching.